Okay, so last time uh, we read this paper, and I told you, you know, there are some jobs that are very uh, that uh, that uh, you have to read papers. Today we're going to practice again ten minutes giving a read to this paper. Okay, so you have ten minutes again to read this paper, get again the important information, practice that, upload that. You were awake in class, upload the the key findings of this paper. Later, I'm going to give a, this time a, a quick um, version of this paper. And general idea that I want to tell you is that, do you remember the same finding that we talked in the, in ver, about vertebrates, all these tissues? When you compare it with invertebrates, yeah, invertebrate tissues, in, in particular fruit flies, I will show you that the, the findings are very similar and I'm uh, and today I'm going to show you as if these results you know everything is fine uh, but what is going to show you uh, what I'm going to show you in next class is how science as this field is growing it uh, filters some things that or there is some debates and some discussion that are completely normal in science yeah and, and how even as you know, a nature or science paper, um, later there are some corrections that happen that is completely normal. And this is uh, how research is constructed in new areas of research. Uh, so again, with the topic of science communication, this is something that we need to educate the public that because one paper is uh, have some, a new paper appear and, and, and contradict some sections it doesn't mean that you shouldn't get vaccinated. It doesn't mean that you um, that a science is a lie. No, it means that this is the normal way in which the scientific process takes place. Okay, so let's start. So just to recap, last time we were talking that this paper found that there was a balance between these two processes, proliferation and cell death, and um, well. Previous information said, like you know, you kill the cells first, and then they later they get extruded. Eh, I told you the paper found that you know sometimes there are um, different mechanism. The cell can get extruded alive, and then it get killed. And why this is important? Because when you block this process, is when cell masses appear, and later. And on our paper, after this one that is here, it was so important that you showed that when you have a mutation here, yeah, of RAS, what happened here is that the cells can go to the stroma, they go basally. And why this is a problem? Because as we talk, if you have the extracellular matrix below, yeah, so if you have a RAS mutant, they go to the bottom, they go basally, they go to the extracellular matrix, and in those places, you will have a lot of signals that allow the cells to survive and to develop and to grow. So this could be an important part and uh, that can help us to understand better cancer. Okay, so this is invertebrates. Now we're going to study other systems uh, that are invertebrates to see how similar or different this process and it seems that there are some although there is a big difference uh, between uh, or a long evolutionary history between vertebrates and invertebrates it seems that crowding is also important for for uh, maintaining the homeostasis in invertebrate systems so the first thing that I'm going to tell you is how we work in this type of topics with fruit flies. So the first thing that I have to tell you is that uh, fruit flies is a great system to study cancer. And I told you before that uh, almost a hundred years ago, uh, so imagine that this is a larvae, not a very pretty larvae. And they found that a mutation, that somebody found a mutation of a super chubby larvae. In Ancelix, so the normal larvae, the wild type looked like this, and they found a mutant almost a hundred years ago. Uh, yeah, that it was like a chubby larvae. Yeah, so so they call it um, 
there are, and there is not the only one, they have found different uh, mutations that make giant larvae. So, less. so the so they call it DLG, yeah, LGL, those are mutations. And so the idea is that this the is giant uh -huh, larvae. And why this giant larvae was important? Because if you remember that we talk about junctions, cell junctions, the proteins, the multi-complex proteins that affect, that join uh, cells, epithelial cells. When you have a mutation in this, yeah, when you affect those junctions, you start producing changes and producing these very fat and big and giant larvae. And the question that I have is, think why you will have a fat larvae, a giant larvae. What do you think that is the process that is happening there? What are you, what is this mutation destroying? Yeah, you can stop the video five seconds and think about it. Okay, so maybe you have thought. So if you have a thin larvae and now you have a very, a very big one, you are producing, maybe changing the cell growth, maybe producing an extra tissue. Yeah, so this is changing the cell division. Yeah, the mechanisms of regulating cell division. Uh, what is interesting is that the same mutations that they were found a hundred years ago affecting uh, tumors, sorry, creating these giant larvae, now is, is found also in cancers in humans. So I know it, it looks like fruit flies and um, and um, fruit flies and humans are very distant, and there should be no reason to study fruit. Uh, why to study fruit flies to study cancer? But actually, most of the genes, the oncogenes, the tumor suppressors, all those things that they have been studied in fruit flies, they, many of them have been also found uh, important to understand the circuits of cancer in humans. Yeah, so something that a finding of a hundred years ago an observation that it looks that it didn't make any sense later it makes sense later when we were able to understand in more detail uh, what was happening both in fruit flies and in humans so what i told you is that larvae in fruit flies it was a, it, it was from a hundred years ago they start saying there is something interesting about studying larvae uh, fruit fly larvae to study cancer yeah and why because uh, uh, here you have these pockets of cells, yeah. So just various tiny cells, and if you see, they match the color uh, with the adult fly. So here, larvae, and here is the adult, yeah, adult. Mm -hmm. And here I show you. Do you see? This, purple, uh, this brown thing here, it will de develop to form that. These brown things will form the legs, yeah? So these very tiny structures, yeah? That are just dozens of cells that appear uh, since the embryo, like the embryo is born. This group of tiny cells are the ones that will develop, grow and proliferate to produce the adult structure. So what happened with the other parts of the of the larvae? So during development, all of this get killed. Yeah, go through apoptosis. This disappear. This is another imaginal disc, another tissue that is going to go and form the other part, the green part. Yeah, this part is going to be here. But it's very interesting. So uh, most of the larvae. The tissues of the larvae are going to disappear and there will be a second process of morphogenesis when you have you will need to from very tiny and very few cells you're going to have to grow again to produce a new organism that is completely different okay so this process of metamorphosis that that you have here before is very important okay so in other words there is Different from humans, there is a process called metamorphosis that allows the fruit flies to go from different stages, and in this case, to go from a larvae, from dozens of cells, to produce the adult structures. 
and to do that you need a lot of proliferation yeah so all this cell proliferation will become very important for for the process yeah so to go from just few dozens of cells then you go and produce the uh, thousands of cells and here if you see this two tissues uh, sorry two labels the green one it will label the outline of the cells and the red one it will outline um it will uh, label the nucleus yeah this will be a histone and as there is so much proliferation what i wanted to show you here is that they are they look like bubbles that are exploding they are just showing the cell division over time in this tissue of the larvae that is a wing right now you see this doesn't look like a wing it starts looking like a wing and uh, at the end of the pupil stage but legs eyes um the back of the fly there are so many uh, the antenna there are so many uh, tissues yeah that are called imaginal disc that is they start like that yeah they start like a disc and they start proliferating a lot and from dozens of cells you end up at the end of the pupae with thousands of cells okay the problem that i told you with the larvae uh, that become giant is that they never stop proliferating that they so they will never go from uh, from the uh, larvae to a pupil stage and to the adult so they they will get and they 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 will never form an adult or a pupil stage because they, they just keep proliferating forever okay so why this is important because um this is a great system to study cancer why because you can create you have a system in which there will be a lot of proliferation a lot of proliferation very fast so you can produce tumors really fast and study what is the effect of the tumors yeah so while in other systems you know that they could that there should be a um um a balance between proliferation and death here we have a system where proliferation grows very fast and you can study uh, all those all those processes uh, and uh, see what happened in humans for, i don't know in 10 years here you can produce a mutation and start seeing the tumor growing uh, in few hours and start seeing what is happening with all these cells okay so the drosophila melanogaster or the common fruit fly it's a great system to study cancer and it, this is how they found uh, the process of cell competition is because they were studying this type of uh, larval growth okay now i'm going to show you uh, what happened later yeah that is that we start studying not only the larvae but we start studying the other process the other stage that is the pupil stage Okay, so now I'm going to tell you a different story, as I told you. Uh, so you have different stages in fruit flies, and I told you what happened in the pupil stage, in the larval stage. Now I'm going to tell you what happened in the pupil stage. So in the pupil stage, instead of having, uh, uh, in the beginning you had a lot of proliferation, now you have to balance that proliferation and produce more death. Yeah, so you there's a point that the fly has grown so much now the same way that you have a statue imagine the David that Michelangelo uh, was a sculpin so you have this giant piece and you need to start now removing some places yeah some pieces um, uh, to start uh, shaping this statue the same thing happened here you start using cell dead to create in all these different structures yeah so they, well the larvae is a great system to study the proliferation the, the uh, pupil stage is a great system to study how cells are removed and this refinement take place okay so here uh, and we're going to talk about this process that is called live cell denomination and again 
what is the difference between extrusion, the lamination, cell death? There is so many terms, and uh, um, and to be honest with you, there is not a clear definition yet. We are still finding a way to define what is what is the difference between the lamination, the extrusion, and cell death. Yeah, it's it's not it's not it's, it's a field that is growing. Yeah, so but the idea is that. Uh, the cells are extruded, are delaminated, the cells died, yeah, uh, to, uh, to balance the growth through um, to reduce tissue overcrowding. So it's, it's, it's very similar to what happened. And uh, what you will see is same figure that I have seen, that I have shown you, that you have seen multiple times with me. And that you have analyzed that the cells start dying in regions where there is more crowding. Okay, so let me please, sorry, give me one second. Let me delete this. Um, so I know you have seen this. So more undergraduate students like you uh, label the cells, and if you see as the comb rotate, yeah, this structure, this group of cells that you have analyzed they start dying, yeah? And this not only, and this happen in multiple places, yeah? We have so much data. I have only show you pictures of uh, males, but in females and in different regions of the legs, you see cells disappearing everywhere, okay? So later we will talk about what are the, the implications of that, but what do you think? Why do you find so much extrusion? And why it seems to be hiding everywhere that this is possibly the most important part of all this uh, research okay so now I want that you go back into the paper and you remember that I told you about this bow tide yeah that in the bow tide you find first uh, the, the two opposite sections the of the abstract and, and the entire paper here you will find very general ideas and here you will find the conclusion that is also general. Here you will find a results that is the less accessible component. Try to also find the question that they are asking. All that information is in the abstract, okay? So try to scheme the paper. Try to scheme the uh, the um, the, uh, the results section, and so you start getting uh, more used to it to scheme the papers and get as much information. And if we, this was your, again, the paper that you were reading, yeah, you not only skim it, yeah, you will say, okay, this paper is the one that I should, that I, that I, that I should read. So now that you skim it, you will take, uh, I don't know, several days, several hours reading the key components. Okay, so take 10 minutes, and if you haven't done it yet, stop this video and go on Moodle and download it, and please upload your notes on. Oh, 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 this will be your in-class assignment. So now I'm going to show you from a very general perspective why this paper was important. And I'm going to make a connection with, uh, with the other, with the research in Sexcom. So first thing that I want to show you is what they study. I didn't know this information when uh, this paper appeared I didn't know what it was the fly nodum. The nodum is just the back of the fly. Why they call it nodum? Nota uh, for plural, because this is how they call the back of the insects. The uh, the, the expert on this on this field. Okay. So, what do you need to know about the morphogenesis? So, suppose that this is the back of the fly. Here you will have the wings. Yeah, while the wings develop and there is a, a, all the process of morphogenesis, there will be a pressure in the tissue in both directions. Yeah, so it goes pressure here, pressure here, and pressure here. So in other words, there will be pressure, mechanical pressure in this direction and mechanical pressure in the opposite direction. Yeah, so as you expect, what is going to happen is that here you have regions with high crowding, and here you will have two regions with low crowding. And based on what you 
on on what you uh, what I talked last time the regions with high crowding will have more events of a cell extrusion very simple same thing that that uh, that they found in in vertebrates okay and now when you see here the sex comb yeah the rotation of these bristles what we hypothesize that happen is the same thing here you have regions with low crowding and here you have regions of high crowding okay so where you are going to find more events of extrusion here yeah so why you have higher cell density in in the nodum because all the tissue is like an elevator is closing and you're in the middle you're going to get a squish if you're in the middle here the cell density is because as the comb is moving before you had a lot of space and so let me make draw this so this is the you have this is the initial stage let's put an i and this is the final stage so if you here the comb before rotation there is a lot of space here for the cells later as the comb moves now there is almost half of the space for the cells yeah there's just very tiny space as the as the comb start rotating and so there is an increase in cell density so what uh, we ha have been showing you is that there are due to morphogenesis we have been studying that the crowding the tissue the cell density in tissues can change and this is exactly what could happen during uh, when a tumor is growing and in and some of you have read following papers where they create tumors in the back of the flies and they found very similar process okay but later we will talk about that now i just want to tell you later what they did so from a very general perspective they did this very pretty simulation yeah and what it happened if you see is that uh, some of those cells they they start getting smaller and smaller and they will start disappearing unfortunately i didn't realize this when i did the, the schematics here the regions that are crowded have the opposite color here the crowded regions the the ones that have um, bigger sizes are actually the dark red and the the one that have are smaller are are the are the white ones so if you see the white ones here I didn't realize that when I made the schematics and uh, so you'll get confused but you will see for example these cells disappearing and you see these cells disappearing and the important when I talk to physicists yeah they tell me uh, okay they made a, a, a similar simulation and I was like oh why you don't make it as pretty as one is and they said Nico don't be so naive the important here is not that it, the cartoon looks pretty is that there is math underneath and I said maybe they are right because they are physicists and the main idea that they took all the all the data from live samples and you can those live samples uh, you use math to create this pretty graph pretty graph to uh, show the behavior and, and do some predictions okay so both systems in flies it seems to show the same type of behavior when there is more crowding they um there is more extrusion that is what we found okay so this is the key idea of of, of the paper of the fly learning and it's also something similar to what we are finding studying uh, studying the comb so in other words, remember that we talk about a balance. So here they talk that there was a uniform packing, and this is what Eleanor and Rachel have been talking, and now and Jane also it will join that project that you have when there is a uniform packing, you have these honeycomb patterns, 
Yeah, but the epithelia need to repair itself because there is injuries, there are cells that died because they get old, so you need to repair those things. So how you do it? You create more proliferation. Yeah, so when you make and you start proliferating the t uh, star cells to divide, what is going to happen? And so that the tissue is going to start getting a little bit messier. Yeah, you don't have any more these beautiful hexagons. Yeah you have a new reorganization of the tissue that you that the tissue start getting a little bit messier okay so in when and when i talk about messier is that they don't have this beautiful hexagon patterns you start getting more heptagons and uh, uh, squares and pentagon yeah so it is start having, changing the geometry okay so well, in other words, what you have there is an excess on cell proliferation. And I, I think some of you in previous papers, I said, like, we have asked this very important question. Why the cells don't, you know, they don't say, we don't need to produce more cells. Yeah, let's stop right now. And actually, what they do is the opposite. They, they have an excess of cell proliferation. And this seems to be a rule that happened there, maybe to prevent if there is a mistake. But this always happened, there is an excess of cell proliferation, and now they fix it by killing some cells, okay? So now, and this is what we talked also in the previous uh, paper, that proliferation take for, uh, place first, and then that seems to take place later, okay? So in this case, as I told you, the, there are mechanical forces in the sides, in the sides, in the left, that go from the left and to the right side and in the center you will start having more mechanical pressure higher cell density that it will change the shape of these cells again yeah so here you don't have a honeycomb pattern anymore you have uh, you will have a, a different shape here and this will the cells that are under higher pressure they will start uh, exp uh, being delaminated it will go through cell death and uh, cell delamination and cell death later. Okay. So again, you find some H paper calling have different names, but again, this this process in when crowded induce cell death, cell extrusion, cell delamination. Okay. So you come back and and then after the tissue got disorganized, now it reorganize again and turn into this honeycomb pattern that this is what you regularly that you normally expect that happen in all epithelial not in fruit flies but during all evolution okay that epithelial generally uh, have a, like a more organized patterns okay okay so and um, what they showed they didn't have in the they didn't show in this paper but they will show later in other papers and some of you have present some of those papers is that when uh, there is an increase in proliferation yeah when you block this uh, this process something similar to cancer appear you start creating masses on and, and, and they create this type of behavior this type of, of cell growth yeah typical cell growth again you already know which is the gene that they use yes they also use ras because it's one of the key uh, genes to study when you study cancer and they found they, they start making tumors in the fly but they did that in other papers not in this one the, here they was the initial paper that they start uh, creating this um uh, this spark in the field to study the relationship between crowding and, uh, and cancer, okay? So now that uh, we studied the very general idea, and I hope that you studied it, that you understood all this general idea, now I'm going to move a little bit forward, and I'm going to show you some of the experiments that they did, okay? Again, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, yeah? I'm just going to do the generalities of this paper. Okay, so in this slide, I want to talk about 
the different uh, levels of tissue crowding and in both papers they were talking about that yeah they were talking about that there is a relationship between levels of crowding and levels of cell extrusion or in this paper they call it cell delamination so here please look remember that when you're going to have high levels of crowding you're going to have high levels of cell delamination of cell extrusion so i'm going to show you that uh, they did it to, to using two different systems yeah here they use in vitro and here they use in vertebrae cells and here they use the fly nodum. okay so i didn't show you this figure before yeah why i didn't want it to overwhelm you there is a lot of experiments in this um, type of papers uh, so i just wanted to slowly start revealing the key components so here to show that different levels of crowding can lead to different levels of cell extrusion what they did is the following experiment so um, here you have in the uh, x axis you have the level of crowding yeah and what they are doing is uh, using this machine here to uh, adjust the levels of crowding so you make it more crowded more crowded and more crowded and here you see that here there is a normal crowded so a little bit of crowding then here you put um, a little bit more here you have a little bit more and here you have a little bit more of crowding so you can see that here you have the very important control and here you start having uh, the numbers start increasing increasing and increasing why because you are trying to make it uh, one uh, 1.1 fold more crowded 1.2 full more crowded 1.6 fold more crowded okay um in the other axis you will have you see is the number of extruding cells in a specific area okay so i want that you see the figure and you tell me what do you think that is happening there okay so while i delete this and i'm sure that you already came to a conclusion so very, it's very clear what is happening uh, uh, that there is the as uh, when you increase the crowding you um you definitely start having more a higher cell extrusion but i wonder you you go further and try to critic if you were an editor of a journal what do you think about this figure what do you think that what are the questions that you would have do you think that there is something that you will add that you will ask this these people of this paper i'm not saying that this figure is wrong it's just that i wonder you think critically about what this information means and if there is something else that we can improve from this figure that this is what you are trying as an editor to, to help the people that is uh, writing this paper okay so think for two seconds i will meanwhile i will delete this and you help me here uh, okay so one thing that I, I found interesting is that here they are showing different numbers but it seems to be like a like a gradual change and then you have a higher change maybe because it was it is they it is they are not showing like increases of 1.1 you know if they are not consisting uh changes in crowding so why like one question that i will have is like why they didn't increase 1.1 then 1.2 then 1.3 then 1.4 1.5 yeah why why they have to do it in that way maybe is due to the experimental condition so did you what if you are an editor what you did you ask or you are a reviewer of this paper like okay why do you uh, could you explain this experiment better why you didn't do it why you did it like that yeah why you you show this levels of increasing crowding in in this way maybe they will tell you the reason and you say oh makes sense or you, uh, they will do the additional and say like yeah it showed the same pattern so so it's fine 
uh, here and or think that they I asked I, I was wondering is why they don't ask here them that these two groups are statistically different and I don't know if they are trying to show that low levels of crowding yeah this level is so small that they are not significantly different yeah maybe I missed that part in the paper or what generally happens is that you write it with a purpose and a, a reviewer ask you to change it so the paper start changing so much that that you say okay if this is what the reviewer wants let's leave it like that so this is two things that i thought about that now i want that you take your time and your foreign class assignment think about how they would do it in drosophila now yeah? how you change in the flying autumn the levels of crowding okay so think about it okay so you can stop the video and think about it you can even go to the paper and think about it and read it there and, and think a little bit so to do that you have what drosophila has is more than a hundred years of mutation and genetic perturbation so they always that they that we write a grant we say we have an arsenal of genetic tools yeah so if you you will learn if you were in developmental biology i told you there and in genetics but in genetics i don't think that you remember there was something called the uas galfor system yeah uas galfor system super important tool why the uas galfor system is such an important tool because uh, it, it allows you to make a very specific changes in a very specific region of the leg so you can take uh, a specific gene here mm -hmm, and express it only in the back of the flies yeah so so that could be very useful so this is a tool that they can use yeah so they can use and they use the uas galfor system to express a specific gene in a specific region i wonder you think which gene would you express mm -hmm. yeah so what they did here and i'll show you the figure is create in vivo in flies and uh, different levels of crowding low normal and here they have high levels of crowding and what you see here is that they use a galfor yeah and they express uh, this gene here and here they use also a galfor and they express this gene here here they use an or galfor but they didn't express any gene so this is this is just the normal levels of crowding okay just to remind you look green cells mean that the cells eliminate before division this one cells eliminate after division cells divide and only that divide uh, and only have one daughter cell that delaminates and daughter cell that delaminates in other words they try to uh, study this uh, connection between cell division and cell death and it's very clear what is happening there uh, here you have few cells that are going to extrude or delaminate here you have just are increasing and here you have even more so it's the same experiment but using fruit flies so the genes that they use here is gene that reduce cell proliferation and here they increase cell proliferation so you can play with the galfer system in different ways to uh, push a little bit change a little bit the cell proliferation in this specific region yeah, and this is why this is a, such a powerful tool. It's used in silverfish, it's used in mice, and is uh, um, in fruit flies is used everywhere. Okay, in many of the papers. Okay, so conclusion of this slide, of of this slide, uh, they um, they just find using different tools. They found the similar. Uh, a similar conclusion uh, different levels of uh, 
of crowding will produce different level of uh, delamination of ex or extrusion okay and um, which is experiment is better i think uh, the key here is that there is not better experiment sometimes of course uh, uh, there are experiments that are better designed so there isn't better in any specific question but i think what we right now we look in this last decades in science is not to have one experiment but to have multiple approaches to answer the question and see how robust is the answer and if there is variations in the question so here to have one approach and then to have another approach and in vitro and an in vivo approach it make an, and all the other tools in silico approach and other other tissues it, it make even more robust so this is what these two papers appear at the same time when they were such a big deal okay and they let's say start this this project this uh, uh, field of research okay so we're done with this region now i want that in the following slide that you think okay so what do you think that happened with the sex comb how do you think that we will find different levels of crowding okay how would you study study different levels of crowding okay so think for two minutes and uh, i will give you the answer in two minutes and and the following slide okay so here uh, i'm trying to show that uh, in our case the crowding is slightly different here is not produced because of cell division yeah here the crowding is due to the rotation that is due to cell growth that it seems to be underneath the comb so here they should be low crowding you have uh, just a small or no rotation here you have a medium crowding when you have only a, uh, a 45 rotation 45 degree rotation and when you get higher than uh, 60 to 90 degrees you will have a much higher crowding so what you expect that happen is that also the number of extrusions will be higher here and lower here okay uh, in the case of the sex comb this is exactly what happened you start finding that and this is the the movies that you have been studying the well type you find a, 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 a lot of crowding in this region yeah that is the one that have higher crowding here it seems that the crowding is not as high yeah and here you have lower crowding only few cells and here there is no cell extrusion the cell extrusion occur in other regions that that uh, later one day we we might talk about it but the important is that it seems that it shows the same the same idea and here there is one how would you do better this experiment yeah one problem that we have here is that uh, we use females mutants and the wild type however the number of bristles is different yeah so you might ask maybe is that it's not only the angle is that you have one a big barrier and you have a small barrier yeah here the, the barrier is also smaller so so a better experiment is to have um to have uh, it will be to have uh, similar sizes of barrier and changing the extrusion maybe and, and show it in different ways yeah so maybe having a laser and start cutting the and don't allow the growth to take place or having uh, is stopping the growth and showing that there is low lower levels of cell extrusion okay so there is still a lot of work to do here but it seems to be very similar okay so to summarize and i know that i remove many uh, sections of the other paper i just don't want to make this class too overwhelming and and focus on the genetics i just want to focus on on the key component that is that regulation of epithelial cell density yeah it's important and it has very important imp implications for the for the process of carcinogenesis the progress and uh, and uh, the progress of, of of cancer and 
uh, I showed you two papers that are very different. One that is invertebrate systems and the other one in fruit flies. They appear at the same time in the same edition of, of, of nature and they use different systems. I didn't talk a lot about the computer simulation. Yeah, here is the simulation. I just told you that, and let me play it, that similar to other computer simulations, they use, there's a classical algorithm. You have an equation there that you use in every, every time that you want to uh, model these kind of systems. So you need to, there, this equation has advantage and disadvantage. There are things that we have to, that everybody, like levels of adhesion, uh, rigidity of, of, the, uh, of the cells. There are something that we can easily get there are other parameters, other parameters that you need to, to start guessing. Yeah, so every time that we have this type of systems that of computer simulations, you need to make more experiments to make it as, as more realistic as possible. Yeah. Uh, and again, this is another tool. So in this case, you will need to hire a physicist, or if you are really into into computers, you can um uh, there are many biologists that they just work on, on uh, they, they are in this uh, area, in res this research field between, between you know, biology, but they also work in, in computer simulations and everybody wants to work with them. Yeah, they are everybody because not many biologists work with them. And I think this is, this is important, yeah, that I told you. I don't want to focus on telling you all the details of these computer simulations. I just want to tell you that they show the same things that we have been discussing, that they use parameters from the live cells, yeah? And they, uh, and they show that, independent, that when you increase the crowding, you start finding that the cell extrusion start taking place in, an spontane in, a, in regions where there is more crowding and there is not a clear sequence of events. As I, as I will show you in a sec. So what they both are trying to emphasize that that simple physical forces can play a role regulated epithelial cell density. So you remember that in the beginning of the course, I told you, you know, genes are so important. And there's oncogene, there's chromosome, there's cellular rearrangements. And, um, and we went to all the circuits and all this kind of information. This is a great and very powerful approach. Yeah, then I told you, look, when we study it, to understand cancer, we need to understand also the extracellular matrix and the external signals. Yeah, and the, so what is happening outside and the junctions is very important to understand cancer because they are connected to the circuits. Now, I'm telling you, this is not enough. Yeah, it's also important to understand that those junctions are sensing mechanical forces and those are very important to uh, activate those pathways to produce crowding or to produce cell proliferation, okay? And I will show you that in, in future classes that it can go in both directions. It can produce high levels of crowding, can produce uh, extrusion or low levels of crowding. And it's, uh, it will make the epithelia to, to start proliferating, okay? And uh, that this is a fundamental process to understand the early stages of cancer. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you a few questions. So you think with me. Yeah. Uh, so let's go. Okay, so here you have this process that you have seen this movie hundreds of times. Yeah, and I have seen it also hundreds of times. And we have analyzed it together. So the question that here you might, that I have for you is, where does the cell death place uh, during development? Yeah, it takes place here. It takes place here. It takes place here. It takes place here, or it takes place here in the joint. So underneath the comb, above the comb, in the tarsal segment, yeah, or it happen in the joint. 
No? Or maybe you think Nicholas, they could be a combination. So I want that you, for your in-class assignment, where do you think that the cell death take place? Yeah. Okay. And now the next question is why? Why you think that is A or why is B or why is B and C? You know, why do you think? Or a, a better question, maybe some of you have never seen this movie. Do you see any cell dying? Okay, so question for you. Uh, what are the patterns of cell death? Yeah, so you find that there are big clusters, there are small clusters, there are, they died in individual cells, or there is a combination of both. Okay, so again, I want that you think, and maybe you have listened to me uh, talking about this. I just want that now that you are aware of this, so that this is happening, and now you see it with a different perspective. Because this is what happened to me during the fall, during the next, during the past years, that new information appear and it's like, oh, maybe this is what is happening. So, for example, the research of of Esri, Ella, Emma, and Tyson, a new paper appear and I'm like, okay, now it makes more sense why the cells are dying like that, and and hopefully in the following classes, uh, we can I can show you why the research that they were doing, uh, the results uh, make a lot of sense when we, we interpret it in that way. So, okay, think about that. Um, if you're in class, I might ask you, why do you think that they, they don't die? Why they die in clusters? Why don't die individually? Why they don't have in the individual uh, uh, individual sections? Okay, now what is the sequence of, of events of extrusion? So again, here is the movie. So the question is, do you think that there is an organized pattern? Yeah. So the cells start dying here in the bottom and there is like a gradient and they start dying and going up and going up. Or maybe it's the opposite that it goes down or maybe it goes from left to right because the, the comb is rotating, or maybe it's going to right from right to left, or it's like everything that happened in our life, that every time that you study, it could be a slightly different. You know? that there is not a clear pattern of extrusion. So yeah, that every time that you study one leg, and then you go and check the other one, and the, the, the sequence of events of extrusion are different. Okay, so now what I, know, I wanted to show you is I know that you have seen this movie multiple times and what undergrad students like you start doing with me in, uh, during my PhD is, is to start labeling cells. Yeah, one of the students said that he was very detail oriented, start labeling the cells and um, nobody saw that the cells were dying. Yeah. And he was telling me, Nicholas, that there's a lot of cells dying. And I was like, no, because nobody has found it before, because nobody, nobody in my committee meeting <laughs> has told me to do that. Not all the, all the professors uh, um, from the UFT have told me that this is an important point, because at that point, nobody was considered that there was cell death in the light. And I'm going to show you that 20% of the cells in that movie will die, yeah? That, uh, that, that, uh, so this is why I try to listen so much when you are doing your research project. And if you think a lot about what you're doing, uh, definitely you can be part of, of something new. Yeah, that this is what these students did. So here, what you are seeing is one of the that's the style of labeling that uh, one of the students start doing, and then we all start trying to say, okay, maybe he's right, 
you clearly see that when you label the cells, when you make those dots, it become and you label the cell, you say, okay, maybe he was right about this cell. And then we start labeling ourselves like, okay, maybe he's right about the other cells. And, and, and it was very interesting because it allowed us to study the temporal and spatial patterns of cell extrusion. And it allowed us to go in much more detail to what they found in, in the other papers. And this is what we have been doing in, in your projects, trying to see, okay, what is happening in these regions? Yeah, and we have been quantifying, and some of you are in your projects, have been quantifying the cell dynamics, how this happened and what are the roles of physical forces in this process. Um, so now I'm going to show you, try to show you what they found very quick. Oh, by the way, this is why I started making so many video tutorials for you because I realized that working with 10 students at the same time developing projects, it was going to be too difficult. So even during my PhD that I wasn't teaching, it was tough. So this is why I make videos for you and it definitely helped me to balance these crazy things that we do at CMU with all the meetings and all those stuff and, uh, and uh, developing projects and teaching these classes even you can be close to severe, closer to Siberia than to Winnipeg right now, uh, we can be in contact. Uh, although, please, uh, there are different type of independent studies, different type of research projects. Uh, John Brubaker has very interesting projects that he's started doing a lot of um, work that uh, in the lab. Yeah, if you are during summer, it will be, I think it, it will be easier for him. If it's during the school year, you can also we're trying to, to open more of these positions and trying some of those. Please be patient <laughs> with us. It's just that uh, we want to give you the best education, but sometimes uh, other universities don't offer so many of, this, uh, of these projects uh, where you have the professor in our universities, they will tell you maybe come here and watch the Petri dishes <laughs> and then go home or oh this machine broke so I need that you pipette this time a hundred times and I will see you next year yeah so here they're actually trying to think together and to work together and getting some publications out of this so please be patient with us and we're going to improve it every year and do it better so here what the students did is this uh, around the region of the com we found that in the same way that uh, in the previous papers, we find that some cells die early and other ones die cells that they, they die later. So here you see different groups in blue. You will see in circle in blue. You will see cells that are dying in the early stages, while in yellow cells that are dying um, uh, later in development. And so for me, it was clear that you know Nicholas there are some cluster taking place there. You know, cells are dying in cluster. The surprise is when you go and study them and see that there is no cluster there, okay? That is more individual what things are happening. And then we went to different regions of the leg. And here, for example, is the joint that, um, and you see uh, here squares, yeah? That the cells are also dying there. Mm -hmm. So, although, this is why I told you that, to my surprise, I don't see it happening when I watch this movie. If you ask me how many cells are dying there, I would say maybe two or three. That is what generally er everybody told me, but in different regions. So, in this region, in the joint, there is a lot of cell death, yeah? And when you go here to the top, you label, uh, you label cells uh in that region higher to the uh higher to the sex come yeah so that you, it will be this region you find also a lot of crowd intake a lot of uh, cells delamination or cell extrusion or cell death taking place on those regions so it seems that this is not because of the sex come it seems that it's again the same process that we have been finding everywhere that uh, 
during during development at the pupil stage you start killing a lot of cells to make the legs and to make the not the back of the fly or yeah to refine the structure and it seems to be an important part of morphogenesis and a great system to study how cell death is impacted by mechanical forces. So this class, you have listened to me sometimes talking this before. This time I wanted that you not only listen to me, but you think and you think in terms of uh, an old research project that are taking place at the same time and uh, trying to come with the new ideas that this is what is happening uh, in one of the, in some of your projects or some of you are going to start uh, some this type of projects or you're going to write a paper so that you start thinking about it that so here uh, the only region that we didn't find cell that was underneath the comb that it seems to be the region that is pushing the comb. Uh, in the other regions, it seems to be cell death. Yeah, and one of the big questions that I still have, and I don't know how to answer it. Before me, so the more important regions to study were, were the cell that was happening. One professor asked me, actually, I think the most important part to study is why those cells are not dying if there is so much pressure, you know? You're talking about mechanical tension. I'm saying that pressure can make the cells die. And if you see all the cells are pushing the comb, they are under much more pressure than other cells because they have to move the other cells. So, so what has happened with those cells is important because maybe this is what is happening in tumors. Yeah, that did you activate something to say cells non, please don't die here, no matter how much how much mechanical pressure there is there. And, and and it seems to be very important. Um, what are the patterns of cell extrusion? Seems that the cells don't die in clusters. Yeah, so um, later I will show you, and some of you have seen uh, epithelias where, where the cells in the dorsal closure. Some of you have presented about the dorsal closure that you see like a, a, a zippering of the tissue that many cells are dying and an entire like 50 seems like 50 cells dying and it seems to be a big cluster they are not dying in a cluster they gel cells generally died in individual patterns and the question is okay but why you don't save time and died in a cluster you know why you have to make small holes everywhere and I didn't talk a lot about this in, in the paper, but in the paper of the of the NADOM, they didn't talk about this in the first paper, but in the two fly paper in the in the, in the two in the paper in, in flies and in our case that we study in a lot of detail the the what are the dynamics. We found that there is unfortunately for me it was very frustrating. I was trying to think that science worked like this and actually what we find everywhere and if you have been and uh, have done the oscillations process you will see that sometimes you say like is there actually a pattern here what why is this making sense to find so much uh, so much variation in some cellular process but it seems that if you as i said before if you study the right leg and the left leg, if you were able to image them, the cells will die in a different way. The cells will oscillate in size in a different way, but they will arrive. The comb will stop at the same time or in, in the same degree, uh, rotate in a similar degree. The cells will have a similar cell density. So it seems that everything at the cellular level is disorganized, but at the tissue level seems to be more organized. And uh, in the in a future lecture we will talk about the project of uh, of uh, some of uh, some of the students here there are rachel eleanor and jane that we are studying how the geometry of the tissue need to reorganize yeah and that these honeycomb patterns uh, get disorganized when cancer appear and and this could be a potential landmark for cancer 
Okay. So what is the significance of, of all these things that we taught during these uh, two lectures? That um, the human body is constantly rebuilding itself. Yeah. So, so we have these walls, these barriers that you will hear during these uh, following uh, classes in, in here in this in the in class lectures and in the uh, in the video lectures that you watch at home. And those walls are very important for multiple reasons. Yeah, and they need to be re repair. Yeah, Physi physiologically they're very important. If they are broke, you start exchanging ions and you can die. If you don't have uh, these walls properly, infections and bacteria can get into your body. Yeah, so there are, there are multiple reasons why you have these epithelials and they are again, not only in your skin, but they are surrounding every tissue. And in the past, we thought that they were very static, but we found that they are constantly readjusting cell density. Why? Because you need to repair them all the time. Yeah, so this is the big picture of all these things that, and again, I have told you this before, but I want that now you see it in a, now that you know more about cancer, more about cell biology, more about genetics, that you see that all this is, is not static, that is constantly moving. And here in fruit flies, what we did is, you know, use systems to study one at a stage and other ones to study other stage because we cannot take humans, yeah, to study this process, yeah. Uh, or maybe uh, if we create organoids or I don't know, study, for example, the cats uh, of humans, uh, they have uh, in, a, in a week, you will see a lot of, a, a lot of this process of proliferation and death, you know, if you are able to create tissue still is not going to be as good as, as, as a live um, uh, or, uh, organism because a live organism will have a lot of signals that you're going to not have there but but uh, but uh, uh, this is definitely happening and it seems to be a process that it will happen during all your lifetime so then in our words that uh, although there is a lot of changes during uh, morphogenesis in the beginning humans during the stages of, of the in the fetuses you know but later after development after the birth there is still development and the epithelials are constantly readjusting okay so this is something important and what we focus on is that the question that we always uh, are going to have is how they are able to repair to well they maintain the function because you cannot say let's close this uh, this uh, stop living for five minutes and and we repair your epithelia no actually the epithelia are are, are we constantly repair and while we in the beginning we thought that one big repair will be the most efficient way to do it you know I always think about efficiency so like you know what about if you just make one big hole of cell dead and you repair all those cells in that region? What if you think about physics, if you think about making those big holes, it will be really bad for the body because it will be uh, a way to, to get an infection. So you need, and also in terms of physics, you can break the epithelial because there is too much force. If you make take a laser, and make a big uh, a hole. The bigger the hole, the uh, it's like when you make a hole in a plastic. If you pull, if you pull it, the more than you pull, the bigger the hole that it will get. So if you if you this is under tension, yeah. So if you if you make a, a the bigger the hole, is going to is going to break even more and more the epithelium, and it will be so. It's there you are not going to have. Uh, a proper repairment of the tissue, what you're going to have is an injury. Yeah, and so the body will be constantly injured. So this is not happening. What is happening is that you have multiple small repairs. Yeah, and this is why, although it looks like in clusters, 
what is happening is that you have sequential events of cell extrusion that we don't know why or we didn't know why now there is a, a, a lines different lines of evidence that uh, that i will show you later that explain why it seems to be random in different places and it seems to be it, it, it could change but it's always individually the cells around here if these cells is dying the other ones that are around there are not going to die yeah and it, this seems to be an important mechanism okay in the following lectures and later i will summarize some of the work that some of you have talked in previous lectures that they said how cancer can hijack this project this process yeah so sorry let me delete this so when cancer appear now they hijack this mechanism to repair the tissue and now what you're doing is producing mechanical pressure to kill the, the, the healthy cells, okay? So what I did today is try to show you how a new field started 10 years ago and try to show you that that is a, and in the following lectures, I'm going to show you that 10 years after this field started, it led to a lot of publications and it also led to some uh, changes and said like you know this paper have this right but this i i disagree with this and and there is a uh, there is new lines of evidence and somebody for example asked we uh, we focus less in the genetics and we focus more in the cell dynamics so everybody has something to tell about that and this is a, a way that science not only improve himself but it grows and enrich himself so diversity science and different approaches is, is is very important okay so again talking about science communication this is super important and we have to educate the public and said this is something that is very normal and we don't have to overreact and say so science is wrong or all science is perfect no science go to a go to a, a growth and we have to to let the data speak about the about the results yeah yeah so only that we should trust evidence rather than our opinions okay i hope that you enjoyed this uh, lecture of today and if you have any doubt please do not hesitate to email me or ask me during the class